It is one of the highest rated shows on TV at the moment and tonight we're anxiously awaiting the season five finale. Today I'm joined by Andrew Lincoln who plays Rick and special effects makeup designer and director Greg Nicotero. Welcome guys. <laughs> so an absolute pleasure to have you both. Season five has been just incredible from start to finish. I haven't seen the finish yet, but I can imagine it's going to be amazing. Even watching it, it feels like a completely different to all the other seasons. Working on it for you both, how has it been different from all the previous seasons? It's been bigger than ever, I think. I think the scale of it's been ex astonishing. But to be able to spin so many story arcs with so many characters, I think has been one of the most satisfying things. Certainly from where I've been stood. And I, I think also that's tremendously important to our storytelling arc. We have 14 characters, more now. We probably yeah. have 22, we yeah. have an ensemble cast that's quite large. And we have to sort of wrap up those story arcs and bring everything back together. And one of the things that I love about our writing team is we get a chance to do that through the course of the season. And everything that happens affects something else. Bob's death, Beth's death, Tyrese's death, the fact that our group is, has been distrustful of everyone that they've met along the line. And then all of a sudden they find this place that's too good to be true. And the, the way that impacts Rick, I mean, the, the fact that Rick says, well, if they're not okay, then we're gonna take this place. And you go, wait a minute, is he becoming one of the people that they have so violently fought against? I love the idea of who Rick was season one versus mm. who Rick has become now. And it's all about survival. And, and Rick says, I'll do whatever I need to do to protect our people. So the level of human drama and interaction uh, is it continues to raise the stakes in our show. I also love the fact that we've moved to a civilization. I think it really deepens the show and it feels like we're moving into a new area where you, you do, you find a man who is very hardline. I mean, this is, a, they're extreme. We're, we are damaged goods, you know, we've come into this community and it's almost like we're the poison and they're a bunch of innocents. I think one of the, the big themes that we will get into tonight, which will, which will carry on to season six, which is rebuilding, which mm -hmm. is trying to integrate these two groups and say, okay, we're gonna stay here. We know how, what it's like to survive. You guys wanna stay here. We gotta figure out how that's gonna work together and how we're gonna protect ourselves from whatever threat is out there because there's one great line that uh, Rick says in the finale, uh, which won't spoil anything, but, but he basically points out the fact that it's not just the dead you have to worry about. We've been out there, we've come upon people that are just as dangerous. So you guys have been living in this place really unfettered for, yeah. for two years, yeah. and you have no idea what's out there, and it's not just the dead. And that's something that, that really weighs on Rick and his group because they know what's out there. So with the season finale tonight, it's ending, sadly, season five. Um, what can we expect? It's a 90-minute episode. Greg, you directed it. What can we expect? Well, we do get a chance to wrap up a lot of the story arcs that have been set up. You know, this, we, the last we left, Gabriel was mm. sort of outing our group. Um, everything that, that happens in the episode sort of winds things together. We, we, we know that there's going to be some sort of tribunal where they're gonna talk about what they're gonna do with Rick. I mean, he just pulled a gun on everyone and, and Michonne knocks him out. There's a sort of echoes. With Scott's writing and a lot of the, the writer's room, they plant things, like you say, in the first episode that get resolved only at the final episode. Yeah. And I think that that scene with Michonne is very much a conversation about and we're not allowed to talk about it, but two ideas that have been going on throughout the whole season about, you know, are we too far gone? Are we the, the poison or are we the cure? You know, and I think that it's, it's lovely to have space around those scenes because as actors, yeah. that's the way you play it, you know? And I, I think you're right. We are sort of, it's an exciting thrill ride, the show. And we, we never want to lose that, but also it's a very, detailed sort of character story as well. Otherwise, I don't think people would really be so engaged in it. Yeah. Um, Rick and Michonne, last episode, we obviously saw 
him getting knocked over the head yeah, she, by Michelle. She hit me on the back of the just head. Just when you was getting to the crunch of your speech. I <laughs> yeah, wanted to well, know how it was going to end. I don't think it was going to end particularly well, well for anybody. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was actually probably a good judgment call on her <laughs> behalf. Um, is it a betrayal thing? Has she actually, because I've noticed in the last few episodes, they've kind of had different ideas of what to do next. You know, should the group go to Alexandria? Should we stay out on the road? Is it? Is, is she betraying him now? And is Rick losing control of the group? I don't think it's, it's a betrayal. I think it's the fact that she, I, and I think you're right, she, she was the one, she was the, the lone wolf that we rescued. And she was the one in, uh, when we went to Noah's um, community that said, we're, you know, we've been out too long. She realizes that we're falling apart. And that's another reason why I love this season so much, because we start in one place and we end, we're probably in the worst place we've ever been. And then we find salvation, in inverted commas. Um, but, you know, she's, I love their relationship. I think be behind their clashes, there's a deep respect and a deep love for one another. They owe each other their lives. And, um, and I think probably one of the few people in that group that could call Rick out in that episode was right. Michonne. I mean, I think, I think Daryl and I think Glenn could do it. Carol, and, maybe. And Carol. Well, Carol's an interesting character because yeah. I think they're very close. Yeah. I think that if anything, and he's, he even said it to Carol way back. He said, you got there before me. And, and I feel that with Rick and Carol, it's almost like they're waiting for everybody else to catch up. Um, she's a very complicated cat, and yes. you know, and their relationship is a completely different thing. And it's almost like uh, Othello and Iago, and I love yeah. scenes with that, with with Melissa. She's just an alien mm -hmm. actress. She's one of those extraordinary um, talents, and you know, every scene with her is just fun. It, it's really been a unique journey because there's a great moment in the finale. Uh, where Carol just puts all her cards out there mm. because she really is like the stealth black widow. I mean, she's undercover, she's deep undercover, Rick's undercover, mm. Daryl's part of it, but Daryl's off with Aaron now. So yeah. it's really Rick and Carol that kind of know what this plan is. Speaking of Rick, some people have compared him to Shane. He's like the Shane in season one, you know, yeah. kind of deranged and like just completely different to the rest of the group. Would you agree with that comparison? I was thinking about John yeah. Bernthal all the time this season. There's so many, the, the echo of uh, the barn scene, uh, you know, with Sophia coming out was very much like 15. I, and, and, you know, funnily enough, I was emailing John a lot. He was with me, as was um, Sarah, uh, Sarah Wayne Callies, a lot when we came into Alexandria. But certainly um, we spoke about it a lot and I don't think it's any coincidence um, that there are a lot of um, sort of echoes of right. of him I think it's I, I think he's in a place <coughs> that Shane was where he's come to a, uh, a decision uh, a place that he feels is absolutely right but people are not with him yet and he so he's frustrated and confused and and, and scared I mean he's a f control freak and just lastly, what can we expect from season six? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we're, still, we're still breaking story on season six. We start shooting in about six weeks. So we're not there yet. Um, and if I, if I said a word of what we were going to be doing, I would be in so much trouble. I think that you will get a very strong sense uh, in the final minutes uh, of uh, the, the season finale that there will be blood in season six. You love that quote. I love That's it. your favorite. <laughs> well, because it, it, it's saying everything and nothing. But then saying nothing <laughs> at the same time. There it's you perfect. go. We do set up, we do set up a, a new threat. Yeah. And I think given where, which is a good point, given where the finale ends, yeah. uh, w things are teed up very well. You're for just our saying group. exactly what I just said. I am. I'm <laughs> reiterating. No, no, no. I'm reiterating. Be better. I'm reiterating. <laughs> okay, good. What he said was great. Yeah. There, how's that? Great. Well, it's been lovely having you both. Thank you for talking to me. Thank you. Pleasure. And can't wait to see the finale. It's good. <laughs> Watch it. <laughs>